So a couple of days ago, Douglas McGregor highlighted the fact in an article that he posted on the American Conservative that the polls are putting together a 200,000 man army. Hmm? Now, this is extremely interesting. This announcement was actually made at the end of November and not many buddy gave it much attention at the time. And actually we should have. And I'm thankful for uh, Colonel McGregor for bringing it up. Uh, a couple of other people in the alt commentary community have also picked it up all of a sudden because of uh, Doug McGregor, because it actually is a really important moment. Because you see, the war here in Ukraine, I mean, everybody knows how it's going. It's going horribly for the Zelensky regime. They're gonna lose. And see, they want NATO to come in. They want NATO gear. They, they think that magical gear will fix all the problems, but of course it won't. What is necessary are boots on the ground. And right now, the Zelensky regime, by their own admission, they only have 200,000 combat troops. The Russians, they've amassed around uh, Ukraine, both in Belarus and in um, Eastern Ukraine, just here in Kharkov and Belgorod, and in the South, they put together an army that two weeks ago was at 540,000. Probably by this time, it's 600,000 at least. Okay, so, you know, it's a three to one ratio. And on top of that, the way this attrition warfare has been going on, you know, the Zelensky regime sends one shell, the Russians send back six. Uh, one Zelensky regime force member dies, uh, or 10 rather, of the Zelensky regime dies, and only one Russian dies. I mean, it's that lopsided. So the fact that they are down to 200,000 men and the Russians have put together an army of at least 600,000, and it's probably gonna keep on growing until they get ready for their big winter offensive. Well, you know, the outcome is clear. And so the neocons, of course, want to continue this war one way or the other. On the, on the other hand, the Poles, the Polish leadership, they have these bizarre notions that they can somehow uh, uh, resurrect the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. I mean, there has been times when Poland has been a great empire uh, in, in Central Europe, but not today, <laughs> okay? I mean, see, it is a medium-sized country in Europe, the Poland of today, mm -hmm. and it has lost certain territories that historically were Polish, specifically the city of Lviv, or Lvov, depending on how you want to pronounce it, in the area of Western Ukraine, known as Galicia. The area of Galicia also extends further to Belarus, but for purposes of this conversation, let's just talk about Western Ukraine. The Poles have their eye on that territory. And so obviously, what is going on is that Poland and the American neocons want the same thing for different reasons. The Americans, seeing how the Zelensky regime is collapsing, because it is, it, it's, it's just a matter of time at this point. See, they want to continue the war and they want to be able to put in bigger, more sophisticated weapons, NATO weapons that they can't really transfer to the Zelensky regime because it would be too obvious. For instance, they can't send F-16s or M1 battle tanks to Ukraine for the obvious reason that the Zelensky regime does not have the troops that are trained on that equipment. And so that equipment would necessarily be operated by NATO troops and that would be a big no-no politically, right? And so, you know, they want to send in this gear, but they can't. But see, Poland, can operate this gear. They've got the men trained to operate all the NATO equipment. And Poland is putting together this big force. So maybe Poland could be the next proxy against Russia. That's what the neocons are thinking. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Poles, they're thinking to themselves, well, Ukraine seems to be collapsing. The Russians, they're gonna win and they're gonna dismember the Ukrainian nation, and they're going to take everything roughly east of the Dnieper, 
and south of Dnepropetrovsk, including Odessa, all the way to Transnistria. And so why don't we take a slice of Ukraine? Hmm? I was talking to a friend of mine in the commentary community. I'm not going to mention who it was because I'm going to reveal his point of view. He was thinking that the Poles might be sent all the way to the Eastern Front, that the Poles would get into this conflict with their NATO gear and ship it from the Polish-Ukraine border on the west all the way to the Eastern Front. But I disagree with this, this very smart man that I was having this conversation with. I think that under cover of opening a second front against the Russians, the Poles are going to invade Western Ukraine. Now, they made this call up in November, late November. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time to train all these troops. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the troops that the Russians called up, they were all uh, guys in the equivalent of the National Guard. Okay, They're trained, and then they go for periodic tra retrainings during the year. So gearing them up and getting them ready is not that big of a deal. What Poland was doing is basically sending up a brand new army okay, with these 200,000 troops. And so putting them together is going to take several months, six months at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of all these um, Polish-Ukrainian friendship treaties and ceremonies and blah, 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 you know, the Poles aren't going to have a hell of a lot of problem going into Western Ukraine, especially if they argue that they are going in to set up a second front to defend Lviv, right? And so the Zelensky regime is going to be like, what do we do? I guess we let them in because, of course, the Zelensky regime doesn't have the troops to stop the Poles, right? So they're going to uh, make a virtue out of weakness and allow the Poles to come in, mm -hmm. Now, here comes the issue. What do the Russians do? Well, do the Russians just allow them to take Lviv? Because Lviv is basically 60 kilometers, roughly 40 miles, from the border with Poland. And historically, it has been a Polish city. And Putin, at the very beginning of the special military operation, alluded to the fact that the Poles had certain interests in western Ukraine. Maybe the Russians decide to give them Lviv. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they decide that they don't want that to happen. Either way, this would be a way for Poland to grab these parts of Ukraine that they consider historically theirs. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it would be a way for the neocons to continue this war because they'd be thinking, now that Poland is on the ground in Ukraine, we can funnel all the NATO gear and more NATO troops in the uniform of Poland into the conflict directly, but it's not the United States, it's just Poland doing its thing and with assistance from other of its allies, you know, Romania and whatnot, hmm? in terms of troops, I mean, in terms of equipment. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, I mean, could this happen? Possibly. And I, that's why I'm mentioning it. Hmm? Do I think it's a high likelihood? Actually, I do. I think that the Polish leadership class, which is highly nationalistic and hates the Russians with a passion, and they don't have that much affection for the Ukrainians either. Well, I think that they would really love to grab that bit of Western Ukraine. And they wouldn't mind killing some Russians along the way. Well, could this widen the war? Well, it would depend on how the Russians react. If the Russians set up some line, say, at the town of Ternopil in western Ukraine, and say, you guys can come into western Ukraine, but only up to Ternopil, and they enforce that line, well, maybe Poland just takes a chunk out of Ukraine, just as the Russians are taking a much, much bigger chunk of Ukraine, and, and that's it. Or it could be that the Poles decide that they really want to go to war, egged on by the neocons, and all of a sudden, the Poles become the next proxy. Now, what I'm describing to you, see, this isn't that weird, because if you know about the Syrian conflict, this is kind of more or less what happened. See, the Americans egged on the Turks to go and try to take a bite out of Syria. That's how Turkey got involved in the, in the Syrian civil war. Mm -hmm. 
And so this approach by the neocons of egging on some totally unrelated country and getting them into the conflict so they could funnel weapons and create more chaos on the battlefield. It's their modus operandi. Hmm? All kinds of interesting things are going to be happening now that the Zanski regime is clearly losing. Now that we see sort of like the end game of this conflict. And we're just going to have to wait and see. Know what's going on.